When I was a child, I used to play a game called Sim City. The goal of the game was to build a thriving megalopolis, which was a city with a population of over 500,000 people. Now, the obstacles you had to overcome were innumerable. Natural disasters, crime, pollution, lack of land, getting the taxes just right so the people wouldn't complain. Building a city in real life would be even more difficult. She did it, though. Not once, not twice, but three times. Shira built three cities, and her efforts have been recorded for everyone to see in the Hebrew Scriptures. Now, genealogies in the Bible are seldom our favorite devotional material. They can be confusing, following the list of who begat who, and even more challenging, pronouncing the names if you haven't studied the original languages. Now, genealogy seem to be God's way of remembering God's people, especially some who have been overlooked. Shira's story is someone that could have easily been overlooked by even the most careful of Bible readers. Her story is told in a single verse in 1 Chronicles 7.24. And here's what it says. His daughter Shira built both lower and upper Beth Haran and Uzen Shira. That's it. Shira's story is folded into the story of her father, or maybe her grandfather, and her family's tragic downfall. Her great-grandfather, Joseph, was traded into slavery and found himself eventually in the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. As second in command, Pharaoh gave Joseph, his daughter, Asenath, to be his wife. And they had two children, Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim was the second born, yet he was chosen by his grandfather, Jacob, to be blessed over Manasseh. Now, somewhere around the year 1500 BCE, tragedy befell Ephraim's family. One day, while his sons were out raiding a nearby community, they were killed. Now, after mourning, Ephraim and his wife had two more children, a son named Bariah and a daughter named Asherah. Now, names in the Bible are significant. They often point to deeper truths about the characters or the cities that they name. Shira, from the root Sha'ar, means to remain, to be a remnant, to be a small but perpetually surviving portion of a much larger original mass that was eliminated. Shira represents the last hope of her family and the only hope for a forward future. The cities she built are named Lower Bet Haran and Upper Bet Haran and Uzen Shera. Now, Lower Bet Haran and Upper Bet Haran are often referred to in the singular, just simply Bet Haran. While each is a distinct city, they are close in physical proximity, marking the boundary lines of the Ephraimite territory in their early days. Bet Haran's etymology is debated. Some scholars argue that it means House of Hollow. Others argue for House of Freedom with weight falling to the latter. Shira cities make several appearances in the biblical story and are a testament to her skills as a builder. In the scroll of Joshua, Joshua battles the five kings of the Amorites, and when the battle approached the cities of Beit Haran, God intervened and threw down large stones from heaven, which killed more men than Joshua's army. Later in the same scroll, the cities were given to the Levites as part of their portion. Lower and Upper Beit Haran eventually become cities of refuge. So Shira's first two cities became places of security for those fleeing from their avenger. They became true houses of freedom. Even today, these ancient cities stand and are identified with the present-day Palestinian Arab villages, Beit Ur al Fakwa and Beit Ur al Tata, which are believed to preserve the ancient names given to them in the Bible. The third city, Uzan Shera, is not listed anywhere else in the Bible. Its location is debatable. However, some geographers identify it with Beit Sira, which is about two miles west of the suggested site of Lower Beit Haran and about 13 miles northwest of Jerusalem. 
Uzen, from the Hebrew root Azan, means to listen to. Shira named her last city after herself in prayer. Listen to Shira. To truly appreciate what Shira has done, we must consider the meaning behind cities and their connection to women in the Bible. Cities throughout the Bible are often spoken of in feminine terms. A quick read through Lamentations 1, 1 through 7 highlights how frequently cities are described using feminine terms like widow, princess, and daughter with feminine pronouns nearly 30 times in these seven verses. Larger cities like Jerusalem are often described as mothers having daughters which are the smaller villages surrounding the larger city. For example, Jerusalem and the daughters of Jerusalem. New Jerusalem itself is described as the bride of Christ coming down of heaven in Revelation 21. Now, cities in the Bible are built. The Hebrew word for build, bana, occurs 375 times and is almost exclusively about the building of altars or cities. Now, cities were built originally for a single purpose, survival. Cain, the builder of the first city in the Bible, did not trust that God would protect him, so he built a city. Shira, having been born into a nomadic family whose male descendants were killed, may have had the same idea in building and naming her cities. While Cain is the first human to build a city, he's not the first being in the Bible to build something. In Genesis 2, God has seen everything and has called it very good. However, the man was alone, and that was not good. God decided to take from the man's side, and God built Bana. He built an Azer for Adam. Now, the rest of the Hebrew Bible uses the word Azer in two main ways. First, it refers to allied soldiers who assist in battle. And second, it refers to God as Israel's helper. Dr. Carmen Imes of Biola University has noted that if one was in danger of losing a battle, what one needed was an Azer, another squadron of troops or divine intervention to come alongside and bolster your flagging army. So she translates this word to mean a necessary ally. So what does this mean for women? What does this mean for Shira? Well, the man, Adam, did not need a secretary. He didn't need a sidekick or someone to carry out his orders. Shira's family did not need a more, uh, didn't need more farm hands or goat herders or cattle rustlers. Rather, Adam needed a full partner in the work of ruling creation, maintaining the garden and guarding it from intruders. Shira's family needed security from their enemies. Adam needed a woman. Shira's family needed a city. The word helper does not do justice to the role God designed for women to fill in Genesis 2. Necessary ally or essential partner is perhaps a better way to translate the word. So, Shira saw her calling to build three cities as her way of being her family's necessary ally. Now, since Shira is only mentioned once in the Bible and does not play a prominent role in rabbinical literature, can we really know her? Now, some have argued that Shira, the woman who built three cities, never existed. When comparing the Septuagint with the Masoretic text, there is a substantial difference. The Septuagint credits the building of Upper and Lower Beit Horan to Bariah and understands Uzen to be read as Ozan, who is the father of Shira. I'll read it for you. And Ephraim went in to his wife, and she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Bariah, because he said he was afflicted in my house. And his daughter was Shira, and he was among them that were left, and he built Beit Horan and Upper and Lower. And the descendants of Ozan were Shira, Rapha, his son, Reshef, and Tela, his sons, and Tahan, his son. 
So who built the cities? Was it Bariah or was it Shira? It's possible that the translators of the Septuagint could not fathom the idea that a woman built three cities during the Bronze Age and so adjusted the text. Another point of contention in this remarkable story is that elsewhere in the Hebrew Bible, Solomon is given credit for building Beit Haran. Now, one scholar has written, in 2 Chronicles chapter 8, verse 5, Solomon is given credit for building Upper and Lower Beit Haran. Obviously, another writer redacts the story to give credit to Solomon and take credit away from Shira. Why do you think it is difficult for men to give credit to and or to accept the giftedness and abilities of women, especially when it moves into an area that is considered as men's work? She may have a valid argument. Another way to look at the situation, though, is to consider the possibility that after nearly 600 years, the cities of Beit Haran required some upkeep, and King Solomon provided it. So what are we to make of this incredible story hidden within the genealogies of Chronicles? I mean, surely it's a call to pay closer attention to the hidden figures in Scripture. Is it more than that, though? Could this story be a reminder to not be conformed to the world's patterns, but to be transformed? I believe God heard Shira's prayer and that God did indeed listen to her. Shira a literal remnant, built three cities of freedom to provide security and stability for her family and future generations. Her cities still stand today, providing security to their inhabitants. Perhaps the Reverend Dr. Wilda Gaffney says it best. Shira's cities endured through the end of the Old Testament into the period of the Maccabees, more than a thousand years after she built them. The Maccabean warriors who took back the temple of God in Jerusalem from the Greeks who desecrated it used Shira's cities as their base of operations. And today, more than 3,000 years after Shira built her cities, the remains of Upper Beit Haran and Lower Beit Haran are visible in Palestine providing community. Sister and brethren, let me ask you this morning, what are you building? What are you building for God? What are you building for your community? What are you building for those who will come after you? What legacy will you leave behind for the people of God to build on?